Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. Every great idea I've ever had grew out of work itself. Sign on to a process and see where it takes you. You don't have to invent the wheel every day. Today you'll do what you did yesterday. Tomorrow you'll do what you did today. Eventually you will get somewhere. No one gets anywhere without help. Mentors, including your parents, can make you feel special even when you are failing in other areas. Everyone needs to feel special. I remember falling asleep on the toilet in my friend's parents' house. I His mother had a um, text, uh, this poem called the Desiderata, hung opposite the toilet, and I was reading that and I fell asleep and I dreamt that I was flicking through a book. And uh, on each leaf there was an image of a famous painter's studio on one side and on the other there was a small interview with the painter which told you a bit about their working method. I still remember one painter said that a thimble full of red is redder than a bucket full and that each brush stroke you apply diminishes the importance and dilutes the colour of the ones preceding it. The book had a kind of a hinge running down the middle, so I was able to lay it out flat across my thighs and see each side, or see both sides at the same time while using my hands to operate the, uh, the flush.
When I'm working and something goes wrong, I feel a pulsing in my temple and a red heat spread from my neck down through the muscles in my shoulders and back. I remember the first time I felt this I was on holidays. I hadn't wanted to go on holidays at all. I had avoided my parents and my brother the whole time. I spent a lot of time on the beach. After a few days, I remember I discovered the wind comb. It was just a little way up the coast from the beach. It was a huge piece of rusted steel, which jutted out from the cliff that was overgrown with algae. It looked deformed, like a body bent over at the waves, trying to like scoop the waves up. It looked painful. And as I stared at it, I felt a peculiar sensation for the first time. I must have been about 14. It was like a, a metal flower being driven up through a fuse in my spine right up through my ass into my back like something hoped for but unexpected I was afraid I was becoming frozen into its shape I was excited I was suddenly unable to stand or look or behave normally anymore. It was a family holiday, there was a beach, there was a wind comb, there were many young beautiful people on the beach, girls and boys and the wind comb was pulling its rustiness away from the cliff just a little walk up the shore and it was back then I think that I started to hide in shafts of light through panes of frost, wondering if my furtive movements would register through all the refraction. I began to wonder whether, if seen from far enough away, my movements could be predicted, like the movements of water or mountains. Like sometimes, like the other day, I was in my room and it was evening, seven o'clock when the Simpsons are on, and a beautiful pink glow was coming, and the TV was behind a little shutter, and this pink glow was coming out. And then I went over. I wish I'd snapped a picture of the shot. Uh, the, the Marge was standing in a totally three, three or four different colors of pink room. So you'll see that pretty soon in one of my camps. Yes, <laughs> I remember the poem on the bathroom wall started with the words go placidly
I started to put faith in the phantom that had occupied my body. I fell asleep and woke up and for a time I was content just lying on the orange leather couch. I remember I dreamed that I was back sitting on the toilet in my friend's parents' house and reading the desiderata with the book laid across my thighs, the book about painter's studios. And there was a quote from one famous painter who said, I always thought that inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. You sign onto a process and see where it takes you. You don't have to invent the wheel every day. Today, you'll do what you did yesterday. And tomorrow, you'll do what you did today. Eventually, you'll get somewhere. Every great idea I ever had grew out of work itself. If you're going to wait around for the clouds to open up and lightning to strike you in the brain, you're not going to make an awful lot of work. One day I was constructing a table on which to place a gigantic block of ice when my fingers got pulled into the chuck and mashed up into the grooves um, between the metal. I remember I felt a pulsing in my temple and a red heat spread through the muscles in my shoulders and back. Each month I receive a parcel full of tips and I go out and meet friends in a bar and we talk shop till about two o'clock and then we dance. I go in in the morning and I stare at objects that temporarily lose one dimension. Literally from where I sit on the faded orange two-seater couch, they become two-dimensional and monochrome leaning against trees or the sky or a uh, face of the cube I'm in. How in peace do I find you? You who are a worker in peace and to discover after the long haul toward peace, of peace, in peace. We are listening to Richard Tuttle, he first read Close to Art, and he's in the middle of differentiation and service here on Close Listening, WPS1.org. Nine. The fact there is a natural disaster pending does not deter Lelyman. How can that be? Doesn't he care? I saw him before the light and in the light. The painter makes huge portraits which, when seen from far enough away, look almost like photographs, but when you get close you realize that they're composed of hundreds of tiny abstractions. He says he gets the satisfaction of completing a work hundreds of times for every painting he makes. If you want to see anything resembling a figure or a face, you've got to stand way back. But then when you're standing back, you find yourself wanting to get up close and see the detail again and marvel at how your eyes form illusions of depth and line and shape from what's really just colors. To watch an audience in front of one of these paintings is to see people shuffling, moving backwards and forwards, walking with their eyes fixed on a particular point on the canvas, people with their noses pressed up against the canvas, people standing as far as possible away, leaning with their backs against the walls of the gallery, squinting, children transfixed and quiet for a minute. <laughs> 